So what we are working on today, first thing we're talking about is the real number system, which when I go through this, a lot of people tell me, oh, I remember that, but when they ask you questions on it, you tend to forget what the different kinds of numbers are. So we're going to start with the innermost circle here, the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. These are what we call our counting numbers. They're also referred to as your natural numbers. We call them that because when you're little kids and you first start learning how to count, you start counting with one, two, three, four. You get the little books. They tell you one ducky, two duckies, three duckies, and then you count how many are on the page. It's just natural. It just happens that way. That's how we start counting. Unfortunately, if you're my daughter, you skip a few numbers, but she still starts with one. So those are our natural counting numbers. Generally, the word they use the most would be the naturals. They'll use that word more often than counting, but they both mean the same set of numbers. So then if we go to our next circle here, this one, this circle includes all of the natural numbers, but then what does it add to it? It adds the zero. These are our whole numbers. So the only difference between our whole numbers and our natural numbers is that number zero. That is the only difference between them. Can anybody guess what the next circle is going to be with all those negatives in there? Say it a little louder. Ooh, not negatives. Begins with an I. Integers. Good. These are our integers. So our integers are all of the negatives plus all of your whole numbers. So 0 and then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, so on and so forth. So the one thing the integers add are those negatives. So then our next circle here, that one then includes some fractions. We got 7 thirds, negative 5 ninths, 1 half. So once we start adding those fractions, we can even add terminating decimals in there. So if we had like 0 0.3, that would go in this category. Repeating decimals. So if I had 0 0.41 repeating, that would also go in this category. We call these our rational numbers. We deal a lot with our rational numbers. For the most part, those are the ones that we do use. So that over in the other little circle by itself, we have the square root of 7, the square root of 5, negative square root of 5. Another one we could add in there is our pi symbol. Irrational. Good. These are our irrational numbers. So these are numbers that if you look at the decimal, there is no pattern to them. They continue on forever. They never end, which is why our pi is in there. Pi never ends. <coughs> so those are our irrationals. We do work with our irrationals a little bit throughout the year, but mostly we're dealing with our rational numbers. And then that big, huge whole circle here, those are our real numbers. Your rationals and your irrationals are part of your real number system. So that's what we're dealing with our entire year is the real number system. Now, there are other numbers outside of that. But that's Algebra 2. You guys aren't going to get to that yet. We're only dealing with the real number system. So, for example, if I give you the number 4, that fits into a lot of different categories. The number 4 is a natural number. It's also a whole number. It's an integer. It's rational. And it's a real. So you could use any of those titles to describe the number four every single time. They won't always use every single one, but they can. If I get, though, for example, 1.3, that doesn't fit into quite as many categories as a four. What, number, what words can I use to describe 1.3? Rational. And there's one more. 
real. It's a real number also. It's in that whole category. So sometimes there not, aren't as many no, or words that we can use to describe them, but there's always at least two because it's always a real number and it's always either rational or irrational. So you always got at least two words there. So questions that they like to ask, and keep in mind when I say they, I mean New York State, the people who write your Regents exam. Questions that they like to ask involving the number system are questions like these three examples that we have here. So question number one says that we're given that L equals the square root of 2, M equals 3 radical 3, N is the square root of 16, and P is the square root of 9. So when I look through those, M, or no, N and P kind of pop out to me. Anybody else, does anybody know why those might stick out to me, Jordan? They are equivalent to 4 and 3, because 16 and 9 are perfect squares. So first thing I do is when I look at that list, I change those to 4 and 3. That's going to make our lives a little easier. They want to know which expression results in a rational number. So we have to remember, rational numbers means it could be a whole number, it could be a negative, so it could be integer, there could be decimals, there could be fractions. What's the one thing that cannot be there for a rational number? Square root signs because that makes them irrational. You can't take the square root of a non-perfect square. So if I add L and M, would I still have two radical signs? Yeah, so that's still irrational. That's not our answer. How about if I add M and N? I would have three radical three plus four. Well, I still have that radical three, so that's not it. That's irrational. How about n plus p? Yeah, 4 plus 3 gives me 7. There's my rational number, so that's going to be our answer. All right, 2, d is an odd integer, e is an even. Which of the following is an odd integer? So with these ones, easiest thing to do is pick a number for each of the letters. So somebody give me an odd integer for d. 1. Odd integer for use for E. Four. So we're going to plug them into each of our choices, see which one gives us an odd integer. That's what we're looking for. So two times D, so two times one plus four. What does that give us? Six. Well, that's not it, because we're looking for an odd integer. Six is definitely even. All right, let's try the next one. So 2 times 1 plus 2 times 4, 10. So that's not it. So we have 1 times 4 plus 1. What does that give us? 5. There we go. There's our odd integer. All right, and then our last example on this page, if A does not equal B, so they can't be the same number, and A and B are prime numbers greater than 2, which of the following expression must represent an odd integer? So there is another word. Prime numbers. Does anybody remember the definition of a prime number? Can anybody give me an example of a prime number? Let's go with that. Five is a prime number. Seven is a prime number. Nine is not prime. Close. The only way you can multiply to get these numbers is one times the number itself. So three is prime because it's one times three. That's the only way you can get a three. Five is prime because it's one times five. That's the only way you can get a five. Seven. Nine is not because you can do three times three. So that one's not prime. 11 is prime. I think I heard somebody say that. 13. 1 is not. 1 is very special because the only way you multiply to get 1 is 1 times 1. So it's the same number, so it has one factor. The other ones still have two factors, 1 times 3, 1 times 5. 
Okay, so now that we remember what our prime numbers are, 3, 5, 7, 2 is also prime. 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, 13, 17, 19. So we have to pick numbers to use for A and B. They have to be prime numbers greater than 2. So we can't use 2. So we could say that A is 3, and then we'll use 5 for B. And then we'll do like we did in the last problem. I'm going to give you guys a minute. So this one was choice 4. If we plug in our numbers, 3 times 5 plus 2 gave us a 17. So there is our odd integer. All right, so we're going to change gears a little bit, and now we're going to go over reviewing how to solve an equation, which you guys I know have done a lot of practice with, and we will be using solving equations a lot throughout the year also. Big thing we have to remember is what is the difference between an equation and expressions? Yeah. Yeah, so an equation is a math sentence that or with as an equal sign. And then the expression is without an equal sign. So let's have you go through those four examples down there and label it as an expression or an equation. All right. Everybody get it? Woo! Now, if only every question could be that easy, oh my gosh, our lives would be amazing. So solving our linear equations, we're going to go through our steps to do it. Does anybody in here have Miss Enright? What did she always go through whenever she solved equations? DCV. What did her DCV? Dogs crap violently. You guys remember that? We try to come up with these little things so you guys remember them. Dog crap violently. So get rid of parentheses by distributing. There's our dogs. Hmm? No, it's an N right thing. I know. What's the C stand for? Nope. Combined. C was combined like terms on either side. And then the V was for your variable. Collect the variable on one side. Get your numbers on the other side. So while you are doing this, you have to remember your inverses. Addition and subtraction are inverses. And then multiplication and division are inverses. So if something's being added to move it to the other side, you have to do the inverse and subtract it. If it's being multiplied, you do the inverse and you divide it. That's what our, where our inverses come into play. So you want to do reverse order of operations. Normally, add, subtract comes at the end, but when we're solving, you want to add and subtract first. So if it's there, you do your add and subtract first. And then you do all multiply and divide at the end. So solving equations, backwards PEMDAS. And then the one I find a lot of people forget as they're solving is my little star here. That's like a huge star right there. This right here, x over 4, means you are dividing by 4. So to undo division, you need to multiply. That's, as I said, that's one I find a lot of kids tend to forget. And then you must remember to check your equations. If your directions say specifically to check and you do not do so, you will lose credit. So you need to make sure you pay attention to the directions and you show your check if it's asked for. All right, so let's take a look at our first example here. So going through our order, our DCV, do we have any parentheses to distribute through? No. So next goal is we're going to combine any like terms. So over here on my left side, I have a 10x 
and a negative 8x. So combine those. What do we get? So we have 2x minus 3 on our left side. So then over on the right side, I have a negative x and a negative 3x. So what does that give us? Negative 4x. And then my 11 plus my 10 plus 21. There we go. We combined our like terms on the left, and we combined our like terms on the right. So now we need to get the x's on one side of our equal sign, the numbers on the other side. So I'm going to add 4x to both sides of my equal sign. I like to move my smaller variable over. So 2x plus 4x gives us a 6x. Our x's cancel over there on the left, so it's equal to a 21. Now what do I want to do? Add the 3. So I get 6x equals 24. Last step. Divide by 6. So x equals 4. There we go, we solved. Now we need to do our check. We'll do that over here on the side. So we're going to take our 4 and plug it in for every x that we see back in the original equation. So instead of 10x, it's 10 times 4 minus 3 minus 8 times 4 equals negative 4 plus 11, minus 3 times 4, plus 10. Okay, so 10 times 4, 40. Negative 8 times 4, negative 32. So I have 40 minus 3 minus 32 on my left side. Right side I get negative 4 plus 11, Negative 3 times 4 gives me negative 12, and then plus 10. All right, so let's combine all those. 40 minus 3, minus 32, 5. And then negative 4 plus 11, 7. 7 minus 12. Negative 5. Negative 5 plus 10. 5. There we go. Checks out. It's not that bad. You just got to get your brain used to it again. So we just have, what, three examples on this page? All right, so these are all under the same directions. We're going to solve and then check. So number two, I have a tendency that a lot of kids are like, oh my god, there's fractions, I can't do this. You can't freak out with fractions. Fractions start with FR just like friends start with FR. Fractions are our friends. We love fractions. You follow the same exact rules, and I can guarantee almost every single time the fractions work themselves out of the problem before you get to the end. So you can't let the fractions freak you out. So we're going to follow the same rules. Do we have any parentheses to distribute through? No. Do we have any like terms to combine on either side? No. So I'm going to get my R's on one side of my equal sign, my numbers on the other side. So here I'm going to subtract my 1 half R to my 19 halves R, taking my little one over to my big one. So left side, we're left with a 6. And then 3 plus 18 over 2. But what does 18 over 2 reduce to? 9. See? Fraction's gone now. Reduced to a 9R. Okay, so now we can finish this up. Subtract our 3 over to get it away from the R. Oh, it's a fraction answer. Yes. 
3 over 9, who knows what that reduces to? It reduces to 1 over 3. Now, you know the calculator can reduce that for you, right? You guys all have your calculator? If you don't have one, go grab one. All right, so to reduce your fraction in your calculator, like 3 divided by 9, I want you to type in the 3 divided by 9. I'm going to write a little note in help. And then you push your math button, which is the third button down from the top on the left. And then you hit enter and enter. And then it reduces your fraction for you. You should get 1 over 3. It will reduce every single fraction that can be reduced. If you type in a fraction and it gives you the same fraction back, that fraction can't be reduced. That's the lowest form of it. It will always reduce your fractions for you. Yeah. So let's do our check. So again, every R that we see, we're plugging in a one-third. So this was part of our homework. Do you guys remember how to multiply fractions? Multiply your top numbers, multiply your bottoms. So 1 times 1 is 1, 2 times 3 is 6, so that becomes 1 6 plus 6. Equals 3 plus 19 times 1 is 19. Again, 2 times 3 is 6. Are you sure? So we get 6 and 1 6 equals 3 and 19 6, but we got to change it. We got to change from our mixed, mixed number into an improper fraction. We prefer improper fractions now up here in high school. So we have to do on this side 6 times 6 is what? Plus the 1. So our improper fraction on the left side is 37 over 6. Same thing over here. So three, 6 times 3 plus 19, 37 over 6. It's the same. You will not see mixed numbers up in high school anymore. It's always improper fractions. We have some parentheses here, so we've got to do our distributive property first. So 7 times x would give us 7 thirds x. Seven thirds times 9 over 28. So 7 times 9, 3 times 28. Now, do we, what do we subtract over? 63 over 84. Now, I know you guys think this isn't fun, but this question was actually a question right off the Regents exam. They love fractions on the Regents exam, so you got to practice them. So if you can't subtract that in your head, and it's perfectly fine if you can't, I would even struggle with this one a little bit. I have to take a minute to think about it. You can subtract it in your calculator. Just put parentheses around your fraction. So you would type the 20 minus, and then parentheses 63 divided by 84, close parentheses. Are you sure? Yeah, you're sure. That's right. No. Because 63 over 84, that's not even 1. 
this is less than 1. So of course it didn't subtract a lot. You're subtracting a less, number less than 1. Yes, you can. You don't have to reduce. You don't really have to do it to the end, but you can. Yes, absolutely. All right, last thing, we have to get rid of our 7 thirds, and there are actually two ways to get rid of your 7 thirds. There's the way that most math teachers tell you how to do it, and then there's the way that most kids do it because they forget how their math teachers tell them how to do it. Does anybody remember either way? Divide it is the way when people forget what their math teachers tell them to do. Flip and multiply. So then your 7 thirds cancels out with the 3 over 7. So we are left with x on our left side. And then have your calculator help you. 19.25 times parentheses, 3 divided by 7. You should get a decimal. Error? Oh, no. 8.25 is what we should get. Do you have a question? We're multiplying here, that's why. Now, I have a question for you guys. Why am I going to allow us to leave it as 8.25, but one-third we had to write as one-third? Anybody know the difference between those two? One-third as a decimal is what kind of a decimal? It's repeating. You cannot leave a repeating decimal. They always want you to use the fraction form of a repeating decimal. This one's a terminating decimal. It ends. That's why they're okay with that one. This, these two numbers are what we call exact form. The fraction is the exact form because with a repeating decimal, you have a tendency to end it and round and whatnot. So the fraction is the exact form of it. So let's do our check. So 7 thirds times 8.25 plus 9 over 28. We're going to see if that equals 20. So let's do inside our parentheses first. What do we get when we add 8.25 plus 9 over 28? Oh, so that's a big, long decimal. So let's do the math, enter, enter, and get that in a fraction. Huh? 60 over 7. So now we'll multiply. 7 over 3 times 60 over 7. Some people can do that in their heads. Others need your calculator. Either way is fine. should still get 20. 20 equals 20. This one checks out. You want to put parentheses down. I'm going to put parentheses around that one. All right, last problem in our notes. We have a fraction equaling a fraction. How do we solve those? Cross multiply. Yeah, the little butterfly thing. But what you have to remember is I always ask you to write out this step. Otherwise, people forget you need to distribute. This 15 is times both the G and that negative 6. The 3 is times both the negative 2G and the negative 2. So that's why I ask, please write it out this way first so that you remember do both of your distributions there. Okay. This rainbow? Yeah. Okay. All right. Let's see here. And 90. So when I distribute my 15, I get a 15G minus 90. And 
then negative 6g minus 6 over on the right side. So now we solve for g. Let's add 6g over. So I get 21g minus 90 equals negative 6. Add our 90. We get 21g equals 84. Somebody other than Caitlin, what do we get as a final answer? Good, g equals 4. So if you have not already done so, go ahead, do your check over on the side. And remember, you're doing your check inside the two fractions. So we have 4 minus 6 over 3 equals negative 2 times 4 minus 2 over 15. So I get a negative 2 thirds on my left side. What do I get for my top over here? Negative 10 over 15, which can we reduce that? Yeah, again, if you need help, use that calculator to help you reduce. Math, enter, enter. What is negative 10 over 15 reduced to? Negative 2 over 3. Bam, got it. 